Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and we're doing Christmas week. Woo! <laughs> so what I've done is I found some popular public domain Christmas stories, which I'm going to read to you all week long. Some of the stories are much longer than others, so they may be split up into a few videos and won't have the classic Marcus intro outro. But without further ado, we're going to be starting with The Fir Tree by Hans Christian Andersen. Once upon a time, out in the woods stood a nice little fir tree. The place he had was a very good one. The sun shone on him, as to fresh air, there was enough of that, and round him grew many large-sized comrades, pines as well as firs, but the little fir wanted so very much to be a grown-up tree. He did not think of the warm sun and of the fresh air. He did not care for the little cottage children that ran about and prattled when they were in the woods looking for wild strawberries. The children often came with a whole pitcher full of berries, or a long row of them threaded on a straw, and sat down near the young tree and said, Oh, how pretty he is! What a nice little fir! But this was what the tree could not bear to hear. At the end of the year he had shot up a good deal, and after another year he was another long bit taller. For with fir trees, one can always tell by the shoots how many years old they are. Oh, were I but such a high tree as the others are, sighed he. Then I should be able to spread out my branches, and with the tops to look into the wide world. Then would the birds build nests among my branches, and when there was a breeze, I could bend with as much stateliness as the others. Neither the sunbeams, nor the birds, nor the red clouds which morning and evening sailed above him, gave the little tree any pleasure. In winter, when the snow lay glittering on the ground, a hare would often come leaping along, and jump right over the little tree. Oh, that made him so angry. But two winters were past, and in the third, the tree was so large that the hare was obliged to go around it. To grow and grow, to get older and be tall, thought the tree. That, after all, is the most delightful thing in the world. In autumn, the woodcutters always came and felled some of the largest trees. This happened every year, and the young fir tree, that had now grown to a very comely size, trembled at the sight. For the magnificent great trees fell to the earth with noise and cracking, the branches were lopped off, and the trees looked long and bare, they were hardly to be recognised, and then they were laid in carts, and the horses dragged them out of the wood. Where did they go to? What became of them? In spring, when the swallows and the storks came, the tree asked them, Don't you know where they've been taken? Have you not met them anywhere? The swallows did not know anything about it, but the stork looked amusing, nodded his head, and said, Yes, I think I know. I met many ships as I was flying hither from Egypt, on the ships were magnificent masts, and I venture to assert that it was they that smelt so of fur. I may congratulate you, for they lifted themselves on high most majestically. Oh, were I but old enough to fly across the sea, but how does the sea look in reality? What is it like? That would take a long time to explain, said the stork, and with those words, off he went. Rejoice in thy growth, said the sunbeams. Rejoice in thy vigorous growth, and in the fresh life that moveth within thee. And the wind kissed the tree, and the dew wept tears over him, but the fir understood it not. When Christmas came, quite young trees were cut down, trees which often were not even as large or of the same age as this fir tree, who could never rest, but always wanted to be off. These young trees, and they were always the finest looking, retained their branches. They were laid on carts, and the horses drew them out of the wood, where are they going to? asked the fir. They are not taller than I. There was one indeed that was considerably shorter. And why do they retain all their branches? Whither are they taken? We know, we know, chirped the sparrows. We have peeped in at the windows in the town below. We know whither they are taken. The greatest splendour and the greatest magnificence one can imagine await them. We peeped through the windows and saw them planted in the middle of the warm room and ornamented with the most splendid things with gilded apples, with gingerbread, with toys, and many hundred lights. And then, asked the fir tree, trembling in every bow, and then, what happens then? We did not see anything more. It was incomparably beautiful. I would fear know if I am destined for so glorious a career, cried the tree, rejoicing. That is still better than to cross the sea. What a longing do I suffer, were Christmas but come. I am now tall, and my branches spread like the others that were carried off last year. Oh, were I but already on the cart! Were I in the warm room with all the splendour and magnificence! 
Yes, then something better, something still grander, will surely follow, or wherefore should they thus ornament me? Something better, something still grander must follow, but what? Oh, how I long, how I suffer, I do not know myself, what is the matter with me? Rejoice in our presence, said the air and the sunlight, rejoice in thy own fresh youth. But the tree did not rejoice at all. He grew and grew, and was green both in winter and summer. People that saw him said, What a fine tree! And towards Christmas, he was one of the first that was cut down. That axe stuck deep into the very pith. The tree fell to the earth with a sigh. He felt a pang. It was like a swoon. He could not think of happiness, for he was sorrowful at being separated from his home, from the place where he had sprung up. He well knew that he should never see his dear old comrades, the little bushes and flowers around him anymore, perhaps not even the birds. The departure was not at all agreeable. The tree only came to himself when he was unloaded in a courtyard with the other trees, and heard a man say, That one is splendid, we don't want the others. Then two servants came in rich livery and carried the fir tree into a large and splendid drawing room. Portraits were hanging on the walls, and near the white porcelain stove stood two Chinese vases with lions on the covers. There too were large easy chairs, silken sofas, large tablefuls of picture books and full of toys, worth hundreds and hundreds of crowns, at least the children said so. And the fir tree was stuck upright in a cask that was filled with sand, but no one can see that it was a cask, for green cloth was hung all around it, and it stood on a large gaily coloured carpet. Oh, how the tree quivered! What was to happen? The servants, as well as the young ladies, decorated it. On one branch there hung little nets cut out of coloured paper, and each net was filled with sugar plums, and among the other boys gilded apples and walnuts were suspended, looking as though they had grown there, and the little blue and white tapers were placed among the leaves. Dolls that looked for all the world like men, the tree had never beheld such before, were seen among the foliage, and at the very top, a large star of gold tinsel was fixed. It was really splendid, beyond description splendid. This evening, they all said, how it will shine this evening. Oh, thought the tree, if the evening were but come, if the tapers were but lighted, and then I wonder what will happen. Perhaps the other trees from the forest will come and look at me. Perhaps the sparrows will beat against the window panes. I wonder if I shall take root here, and winter and summer stand covered with ornaments. He knew very much about the matter, but he was so impatient for the sheer longing he got a pain in his back, and this with trees is the same thing as a headache with us. The candles were now lighted. What brightness! What splendour! The tree trembled so in every bow that one of the tapers set fire to the foliage. It blazed up famously. Help! Help! cried the young ladies, and they quickly put out the fire. Now the tree did not even dare tremble. What a state he was in! He was so uneasy lest he should lose something of his splendour, that he was quite bewildered amidst the glare and the brightness, when suddenly, both folding doors opened, and a trip of children rushed in as if they would upset the tree. The older persons followed quietly, the little ones stood quite still, but it was only for a moment. Then they shouted that the whole place re-echoed with their rejoicing. They danced around the tree, and one present after another was pulled off. What are they about? thought the tree. What is to happen now? And the lights burned down to the very branches, and as they burned down, they were put out one after the other and then the children had permission to plunder the tree. So they fell upon it with such violence that all of its branches cracked. If it had not been fixed firmly in the ground, it would have certainly tumbled down. The children danced about with their beautiful playthings. No one looked at the tree except the old nurse, who peeped between the branches, but it was only to see if there was a fig or an apple left that had been forgotten. A story, a story, cried the children, drawing a little fat man towards the tree. He seated himself under it and said, now we're in the shade, and the tree can listen too, but I shall tell only one story. Now, which will you have? That about Ivory Ivory, or about Humpty Dumpty, who tumbled downstairs, and yet after all, came to the throne and married the princess. <laughs>